You are a god and you want the world to know of your greatness. But the world is large and the people are all spread out. And the best way to get the people to believe in you is through stories. So you'll send your envoys out to spread the word with the ancient art of storytelling. This is Seven Gods, which was designed by Yoris Moss and Alexander Remy and published by Mayor Infinitus Games, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph and we are here with BoardGameGeek.com. Well, we have our best stories ready, but before we can tell them to the world, we ought to learn how to play Seven Gods. In Seven Gods, players will take on the role of one of seven gods, storytelling around the world, trying to win the favor of the villages present on the islands. This is done by sending your envoys to the various islands and by using story tokens, which are four-sided dice, to meet the values needed to persuade the villages. But before we get into how you do all that, let's go over the setup. To begin the setup, randomly choose one of the seven gods and place it face down next to the board. This god is excluded from the game and will dictate which disturbances will be present in this time of the world. All of the island tiles are shuffled and the player who tells the best stories draws the top tile and places it face down on the board. Then the player to their left does the same until all 12 tiles are on the board. Placed tiles must align with the spaces on the board, they may not overlap or be placed within the inner ring, and they must not be placed in a way that would make spaces on the board inaccessible. Each player will then choose a random god board. They will gain three story tokens and seven triumph tokens in their god's color and their deck of 30 envoy cards. Note that the color of the background is what denotes which god the envoy cards belong to, not the colored triangles in the upper corners. The players shuffle their decks and draw three cards. Each player is given two secret objectives, choosing one to keep and discarding the other. Then the player who picked a god last places their envoy on one of the six spaces on the center of the board named the Other World, and then the other players do the same in clockwise order. Place all remaining story tokens in the Well of Wonders bag and the Old Stories card near the game board. Each player places one of their triumph tokens near the victory point track and all remaining cards and god boards are returned to the box. Now we're ready to begin. During your turn, you'll be moving your envoy around the board and telling stories to the villages on the various islands. You will do this through your envoy cards and by using your god's power and the powers of the other gods. Oh yes, in this game, you're not limited to just your god's power. And on that intriguing note, let's get to the gameplay. The first player will be the player who picked a god last. First, the player will draw a random story token from the Well of Wonders and place it in their story token pool and then draw a card. On their turn, a player may play a card to move. The move value is listed in the colored triangles in the top corners of the card. The player will move their envoy the exact number of spaces listed. They may move in any direction, but if the player is moving against a current in the water, each space will take two movement points instead of one. If their envoy ends their movement next to an undiscovered island, they will then flip that island over and gain one victory point. Once seven islands have been discovered, the rest will be discarded as long as at least one island of each color has been revealed. If not, keep discovering islands as normal until all colors have been found and then discard the rest. If the color of the island matches the color of the triangles on the envoy card played, the player may start storytelling, but more on storytelling later. The player may end their movement in the same space as another envoy, but note there may be a maximum of two envoys in a space at any time. If the player does not want to move, they may instead meditate and they will draw one random story token from the Well of Wonders. On top of moving, the player may play additional cards for their text instead of their movement. The symbol in the top of the card dictates when the card may be played, either during their turn, during movement, during storytelling, or at any time. The other actions a player may take revolve around their collected story tokens and may each be done once per turn. They may discard a card to gain a random story token or discard a story token to draw a card. Discarded story tokens are always placed on the old stories card. They may turn in a story token and take the corresponding god's action, i.e. turning in a pink die to take Wan Yin's action. Though the player may use their own god's action for free because, you know, it's their god. They may use each god's action, including their own, only once per turn and may only use the powers of the gods that are active in the game. If the player has a story token of the face down god, they may use that token for any color god except the face down god and their own. 
The player may also discard four story tokens to take one token of their choice from the old stories card. Now, turning in these story tokens is essential, and you can do this at any point on your turn. And as I'm sure you can guess, using the gods' powers is very useful as well. Now, I'm not going to explain all the gods' actions at once, as they're useful at different points during your turn. So I'll explain them during the rules explanation where their specific power is most useful. Well, we just talked about movement and card play, so let's quickly talk about three of the gods. Activating Quetzalcoatl allows the player to move up to two extra spaces. If activating Raw, you may play a card for its movement and its text, where normally the player would have to choose. And if you don't like your cards, try activating Ischel, who will allow you to draw a card and then discard a card. Now this game is all about telling the stories of your god, so let's start storytelling. If a player's envoy ends its movement adjacent to an island that matches the color of the card played, they may start storytelling in that village. Each island will have either three or four villages on it, and the village the player is telling stories in is the one they are directly adjacent to. When storytelling, the player will take a story token of their god's color from their story pool, roll it, and place it in the village. You want to roll high here, so if a 1 is rolled, you may want to activate Quan Yin's ability, which allows a player to re-roll a 1 once. Each player may only have one of their story tokens in each village, and each village may only have two story tokens total in it. So if the village adjacent to the player's envoy is full, they may want to activate Yamaya's ability, which allows the player to place their story token on any village on the island. Each village has a persuasion value, and once this value is met or exceeded with two story tokens, the village has been persuaded and will choose a storyteller. The village favors the god whose token got to the highest value last. For instance, if someone rolls a 4 with a 3 already present, the 3 can be changed to the 4 with cards or powers. If that happens, the 4 that was previously a 3 wins and will gain the village's favor. The winning player places one of their triumph tokens on the village and gains victory points equal to the persuasion value. Once a village has been persuaded, no more story tokens may be placed there. If two story tokens are on a village but the persuasion value hasn't been met, the player may want to activate Sylvanus, which subtracts the persuasion value at a village by one. Or they may activate Odin, who will add one to a story token at a village adjacent to the player's envoy. Note that the token cannot be increased past four. After the winning god gains their points, the losing god will place their story token in the other world. They will also draw a story token from the Well of Wonders and activate a Disturbance. The player will activate the Disturbance that matches the story token drawn. The Disturbances are found on the inactive god board set aside at the beginning of the game. In this case, they would activate Exile, and the player would take an envoy of their choice and place it back at the other world. All the god boards have a different makeup of Disturbances, all of which are found on the back page of the rulebook, so make sure to have it nearby while playing for quick reference. The last thing a player can do on their turn is sharing thoughts. If their envoy ended on the same spot as another player, they will discuss divine matters. Which means each player will roll out all of their story tokens and whoever has the highest total value gains a victory point while the other player gains a random story token. Divine debate takes many hours though, so if a player does this, their turn will end immediately. At the end of their turn, the player will discard down to 9 story tokens and 5 cards. If their deck is empty, they will shuffle their discard pile, then remove 10 cards from the game, and then draw as many cards needed. And that wraps up the gameplay. Players will continue taking turns and telling stories until the end of the game is triggered. And this game can end in three ways. The game will end if the Well of Wonders is empty, if a certain number of victory points is reached, or if a certain number of story tokens have been placed in the other world. The numbers of these last two conditions depend on the player count and can be found in a table on page 4 of the rulebook. Once a player triggers the endgame, all other players will take one final turn and then final scoring will commence. Players will gain two additional points for each of their story tokens left on an island, one point for each of their god's story token left in their story pool, and one point for every two other story tokens in their pool. They will gain points if they reach their personal objective, and lastly, all players except the player with the most points will roll out their god story tokens in the other world and add the value rolled to their victory points. Players tally up their final scores and the god with the most points will win. In the case of a tie, the god with the most story tokens in the other world will win. If the game is still tied, play the game again to decide a winner. And that is how you play 
Seven Gods. This game is all about trying to outmaneuver your opponents to get your stories told on the islands, but you also need to manage your story tokens well so you can effectively use the god powers and persuade the villages. Though, persuading a village with your story is not always what you want to happen. For instance, you might want to lose on purpose to trigger the end game scoring through the other world. To learn more about Seven Gods, make sure to check out its page on BoardGameGeek.com and join in the discussion. Until next time, I've been Nick Murphy, and that is how you play Seven Gods. Have a great day.